Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, healing from these relationships, and understanding them. We've been doing a series recently on attachment styles and how your attachment style might impact your experience of a narcissistic relationship. Thus far, we've talked about the anxious style, we've talked about the avoidance style. Now we're going to talk about the disorganized slash fearful attachment style. So as we unpack this, you know, a lot of people are really interested and curious about their attachment styles, right? And specifically how your attachment style could you experience, impact your experience in relationships. This isn't about the narcissistic person's attachment style, it's about yours. Today we're going to take on what's called the disorganized slash fearful attachment style. Now this is a very difficult style to bring into a narcissistic relationship. It's a style characterized by high avoidance and high anxiety, both. This is the attachment style where we see both the avoidant and anxious attachment styles come together. It's an attachment style where we see lots of difficulties and challenges with trust in any relationship. And so there might be, in, when these, for people with disorganized attachment styles in their relationships, there might be intense periods of closeness, and then the person with the disorganized relationship style will pull away when things feel uncomfortable, and then intensely recouple, perhaps if there is a period of hoovering or coming together. As a result, this means that when a person with a disorganized, fearful attachment style is in a relationship, with a narcissistic person, it can be very volatile. The very nature of narcissistic relationships, where there is idealization mixed with invalidation, sometimes mixed with detachment, can mean that that kind of relationship landscape for a person with a disorganized, fearful attachment style can feel like terror and chaos. Dysregulation is a common theme in people with disorganized slash fearful attachment styles, and it can be difficult for people with these attachment styles to manage their emotions, which means there can be strong shows of anger, despair, depression. In any relationship, this kind of emotional dysregulation will be confusing and chaotic at times. But in a narcissistic relationship, the emotional dysregulation will come up against the dysregulation that we see in narcissistic people, right? So you got now you got it on both sides. And this is really problematic, especially when the narcissistic person is rageful or angry. And as you can imagine, people with disorganized slash fearful attachment styles may also struggle with abandonment. So when that's coupled, that kind of relationship style and the dysregulation is coupled with the abandonment fears we also see in narcissistic people, once again highlights the volatility that often arises for a person with a disorganized, fearful attachment style who is in a narcissistic relationship. Now the struggle is that people with disorganized slash fearful attachment styles do want relationships, but have such a difficult time with trust, are terribly afraid of rejection, and may get really invested in self-protection by not letting a partner to get close, but also experiencing despair and strong emotion when a partner wants to end a relationship. There is a constant tension for people with disorganized attachment styles, because in this style, this attachment style means it's sort of you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop in a relationship. And there's a constant anticipation that the other person in the relationship is going to leave. So for a person with a disorganized attachment, it's almost like a constant wait for the inevitable abandonment that is coming. And this can also mean that a person with a disorganized attachment style may sort of preemptively end a relationship before the other person can end it first. In a narcissistic relationship, you can see how this style would fuel this volatility because for narcissistic folks, especially a narcissistic person with an anxious attachment, abandonment can result in rage and manipulation. And again, this perception 
of a partner as unpredictable or inconsistent is actually borne out if the disorganized attachment person is in a relationship with a narcissistic person. So the cycle of the narcissistic relationship that goes from idealization to devaluation is psychologically horrifying for a person with a disorganized and fearful attachment style. These relationship cycles of when you have a person with a disorganized attachment style who gets into a relationship with someone with a narcissistic personality style means that we see a roller coaster of highs and lows and the trauma bonded patterns in these relationships may be more intense. This intensity may actually keep a person with a disorganized attachment style hooked. It becomes a confirmation, sadly, that relationships are unsafe and untrustworthy. And that confirmation can keep a person locked into a toxic cycle. The, the disorganized attachment style is often born out of a history of childhood abuse. A child either being a direct recipient of abuse or the child witnessing a caregiver being abused. Whatever that sort of the, the trauma and the chaos the child grew up with, it sets up a cycle of fearful attachments from a childhood with a child never knowing how to get their needs met or not knowing if their needs ever will be met. From a survival standpoint, the child is stuck in a constant state of fear and insecurity. And despite that natural drive to want to trust, the attempts to trust are often met with betrayal and that leads to this attachment style. Now remember, there are two people in a relationship and it is also possible that the narcissistic person themselves, if they also have a disorganized attachment style, it would then be a relationship with two fearfully disorganized attached persons in it and one of them's narcissistic. And this is very much an environment of volatility, distrust, fear, abandonment, and major difficulties with ever being able to create any kind of consistent, intimate, and deep bond between partners. For people with disorganized attachments, because trauma is so often part of the origin of the, of the disorganized attachment style, trauma-informed therapy is often essential to work on these issues. None of these attachment styles are an indictment. You're not stuck forever. But all of, of all of the attachment styles, the disorganized attachment style in a narcissistic relationship probably has the worst outcomes and may experience some of the worst fallout from narcissistic abuse. The disorganized attachment style, again, that, that early history of how much loss and invalidation there was, that incapacity to feel that there's any safe places to go. It's a, it's a really, it's a difficult attachment style to bear up under. So to have that attachment style and the kind of insecurity and lack of safety it creates in the world, and then to enter into a relationship with somebody who has marginal empathy, a need for dominance, and is willing to manipulate, that manipulation when, it, when a person with a disorganized attachment style who's already living in so much fear and sometimes confusion in these relationships, that kind of manipulation can really, really create so much distress. So this is a tough combination. Again, trauma-informed therapy, if a person has this attachment style, is essential and can really make a difference. For those of you listening to this who are therapists, you can see how these kinds of subtle issues around attachment styles have matter so much, and, and there's so many other issues relevant to therapists. Please stay tuned because uh, we are gonna be starting a program, much like we have for folks doing going through healing, this program specifically for people who are therapists, working with clients going through narcissistic abuse, creating a community of clinicians who want to work in the best possible way with these clients. Stay tuned. More information is coming up and really look forward to creating that community for therapists so we can do right by survivors. Thanks again.